the trade-up contract. We all know and love it. The basic understanding of the trade-up contract is as follows. You put 10 normal or 10 stat rack weapons of the same weapon grade into the trade-up contract to receive one new weapon skin of the next highest grade. We all know that. But there's way more to the trade-up contract than that. In this video I will give you an in-depth explanation of how exactly the trade-up contract works and how you can calculate the possible conditions of the skins you could receive from the trade-up by looking at the so-called float values beforehand. So I have done a lot of trade-up contracts in the past and was fairly successful with them. That doesn't mean that my trade-up contracts were chosen wisely though. In fact, my last trade-up contract I did where I received the Statric AK Fire Serpent in field tested condition was not really smart because I could have saved $150 and still gotten the same weapon. That happened because I did not really know quite enough about the trade-up contract and how exactly it determines the condition of the skins you can receive. The five different conditions a skin can come in are Battle Scarred, Well Worn, Field Tested, Minimal Wear and Factory New, with Battle Scarred being the worst possible wear and Factory New with the best wear. I guess you all knew that. But does that mean that two skins with the same condition always look the same? No, it doesn't. Let's have a look at two examples right here. This is an Orb Asimov in Battle Scarred condition. But so is this one. You can clearly see that the first one looks way worse than the second one, even though both of these are in Battle Scarred condition. And here we have two Factory New USPS Orions. While inspecting these, you will almost see no difference when it comes to the wear of the guns. So we just saw two things. First of all, two skins with the same condition do not necessarily have to look the same. That is very important to know because that means that there is something more than just the condition grade of the skin that determines the wear of the gun. Here's where the so-called float values come in. Let's say the maximum wear a gun can have is at 100%, which equals 1, and a gun with no scratches at all will obviously have 0% wear, which equals 0. The second thing we just saw is that the wear disparity between Battle Scarred skins is way higher than the wear disparity of Factory New skins. While almost all Factory New skins always look very similar, the wear difference of Battle Scarred skins is significantly higher. That obviously means that the Battle Scarred condition has a higher disparity range than the Factory New condition. Right here we can exactly see which condition takes up which amount of the float value range. That basically means that all Battle Scarred skins have a float value between 1.0 and 0.45, all well worn skins have a float value between 0.45 and 0.38. Field tested skins range between 0.38 and 0.15. You can find minimal wear skins with a float value between 0.15 and 0.07. And all factory new skins have a float value between 0.07 and 0. Now that explains why most factory new skins look much more alike, while two battle scud skins can look very differently. Simply because the battle scud condition almost takes up half the float value range, while the factory new condition takes up a much smaller area. Yeah, that's cool and all, but why on earth do I need to know this? You might ask yourself now. Well, just bear with me for a second here, I'm trying to make this as easy to understand as possible. It will all make sense in the end, trust me. Now what I was basically trying to show you right now was that the condition grade of a weapon only partly determines the wear and scratches on the gun. As we just saw, two battle scud skins can look very differently and that's because only the exact float value of the skins exactly determines how it looks like. Battle scud only means that your skin has a float value between 1.0 and 0.45. Right here you see the exact float values of my two Orb Asimovs. The one on the right is almost as worn out as you could possibly get it, so it only makes sense that it has a higher float value. The one on the left looks way better, hence has a lower float value, but it's still far away from the best looking Orb Asimov that you could get in Battle Scarred condition. Now here's where the trade-up contract comes in place. If you place 10 weapons into the trade-up contract, it's not the condition grade that decides what condition the skin that you receive will be, but instead the average float value of the skins that you put in and the float value range of the skin that you can get is what decides the condition of the skin you get in the end. Uh, what? Well, let me show it with an example. I'm going to prove that you do not necessarily get a field-tested Orb Asimov from 10 field-tested P90 Dragons. So now that I bought 10 field-tested P90 Dragons from the market, I can check the float values of all these. You can do that on websites like CSGO Analyst or CSGO Exchange, by the way. Since these are all in field-tested condition, their float values are all in between 0.38 and 0.15. You get the average float value by adding up all the float values and dividing that number by 10. The average float value of these 10 P90 Dragons was around 0.29. Looking at the float value range once again, we see that all those field tested dragons combined are slightly below average. So then I also said that not only the average float value of the skins you put in matters, but also the float value range of the skin that you can get. What does that mean? So as we all know, you can only get the Orb Asimov in Battle Scarred, Well Worn and Field Tested condition. That means that the Orb Asimov has a smaller float value range than other skins. You can check the maximum and minimum float value a weapon skin can have on CSGO Stash for example. So now that we know all that, the only thing that's missing is the secret formula that is used in the trade-up contract. Well, it's not, it's not really secret. So basically all you have to do is the following. The maximum float value of the skin you want to get minus the minimum float value of that skin. 
you multiply that with the average float value of the skins that you put in the trade up contract and at the end you add the minimum float value of the skin you can get to that. Well let's do that. The maximum float value you can get with an op as a mob is 1 and the minimum float value is 0.18 as we saw in CSGO stash. We already calculated the average float value of the 10 P90 dragons earlier so that's what the final equation looks like. Then you just throw that into a calculator and you receive the exact float value of the op azimuth that you could get from this straight up. But wait, 0.419? That float value is in the well worn float value range. So if this formula is right, we have just proven that you do not necessarily get a field tested op azimuth even though you use 10 field tested trigons. Let's try and find out. So right here I just move my mouse over all these trigons so you guys can actually see that these are indeed all in field tested condition. Then I went to proceed. 100% well worn condition out of this because this formula is indeed right. There you go, I got the op asimov. This one is in well worn even though I only threw in field tested P90 trigons. And then I went back to CSGO exchange to check the float value of this well worn op asimov. And as you can see the float value is exactly that what we calculated from the formula earlier. And that's basically the proof that the float value that you get out of the trade up contract is not randomized but instead it's regulated by the average float value of the skins that you put in. So here's another cool thing that you can do with this. Let's say you already have an op Asimov and better scud with almost the highest float value that you can get on that gun and you want a second one with a very low float value just to see the crazy difference when it comes to the wear. So just by looking at the float value range we can see the minimum float value in the battle scud range must be something very close to 0.45. So this time we know the final float value that we want to get but we need to know the average float value of the skins that we need to put in in order to get that low float battle scud Asimov. For that we simply reform the formula to get the average float value on one side. By that we know that the average float value of the skins that we need to put in must be greater or equal to 0.329268. So I went to the market, bought a couple of guns and managed to get an average float value of about 0.33. And I also managed to get this one. Very nice looking orb Asimov, in battle scout condition. So this right here is the perfect example. Both of these have the same condition, battle scout, yet these two skins look totally different. So once again, the float value determines the real appearance of a weapon skin and is also quite important when it comes to the trade up contract. I really hope that this was all understandable, I really tried to make everything as clear as possible. Now you should know how exactly the trade up contract works and that the skin you can get out of it depends on the average float value of the skins you put in and the float value range of the skin that you are looking to get. Last but not least, here's a little helping tool that you can use before doing a trade up contract. Credit goes to Max Skillet at this point. I have seen him show this tool in one of his videos and it's incredibly helpful. You can simply go to csgo.exchange, go to calculator and then contract. Put your steam profile link in there so the website can load up your inventory. Select the 10 skins you want to put in your trade up contract. Hit show filters and click on contract. The website will then show the float values of the skins that you put in and it will also tell you the percentage of the skins that you can obtain. Also with the float value. So you won't have to do all that math yourself but instead you just press a few buttons. I will link all the websites I mentioned during this video in the video description. I hope this helped you understand the trade up contract and with that being said I will see you in my next video.